So the Elden Ring DLC has been out for about a week now, and I thought I should make this video about how, what I think about the DLC, as well as what I think about each and every individual things that FromSoft has done with the DLC. Now I'm making this video mainly because a lot of people in my Twitch chat, as well as my friends groups and so on and so forth, always constantly have been asking me throughout the week, how has the DLC been? Is it worth buying? And should I spend my money and to that, I have to say, was the wait for the Elden Ring DLC worth it? The short answer is yes, absolutely. The long answer is it's kind of complicated. But in this video, we're going to be going over what I think about the DLCs, as well as talk about some of the things that involve the DLC, such as world design, boss designs, music, weapons, as well as the controversial difficulty design in the DLC that a lot of people have been hearing on the internet for such a long time now and it's kind of blown out of proportion I think personally but we're gonna get into that when we talk about the DLC. Now this video will be mainly me talking there's not gonna be a lot of super heavy editing it's probably gonna have some background gameplay as well as you know camera pannings here and there so if you want, you can go grab, grab some popcorn, put me on your second screen or your third screen if you have one and just enjoy, talk, enjoy listening to me talking. But let's go over the main point of this DLC then. How is the world design? Well, first of all, the Elder Rings DLC's world design is fucking amazing. It is quite literally something that I did not expect. I expected this DLC to be tiny and kind of the samey as the base game, but Miyazaki really just made a game and called it a $40 DLC with this map. He said that this map was going to be about the same size as Limgrave, but in reality, this map is basically the same size as Leornia, Limgrave, and Kaelid all combined together, which is absolutely mind-boggling. I don't know if he said that because he didn't remember the size of Limgrave, or if he just wanted to set some expectations that this DLC was gonna be small, but oh my god, this map is absolutely massive compared to what he told us it was gonna be. The map is so unique as well, there's so many cool places and things you can go. I'm not gonna mention a lot of the areas or what they're called, except for like main gimmicks and sort of stuff like that and i'm gonna try to avoid mentioning any bosses or anything especially the final bosses it's been a week not everyone has the time to know life the dlc like me and a lot of other people have but there's so many areas in the dlc like you if you head to the east you get to a place called jagged peak which has so many dragons and shit everywhere fighting and you have by far probably one of my favorite bosses that FromSoft has made. My, one of my favorite dragon bosses that FromSoft has designed. He is such a cool boss and his quest is by far FromSoft's best quest with an NPC. To the point where a lot of people who generally do not use summons used summons because of the quest being this good. It is fucking amazing what Miyazaki did. And even I, during stream, used a summon because... Generally speaking, I tend to avoid using summons, um, mainly NPC summons. I don't care. I don't care about using mimic hair. Not it's fair game, but. Using NPC summons, I don't really use them that much because they generally just don't do anything. Then we have the Elden Ring DLC's NPCs, which actually have dialogue and they say stuff, they interact with people, they interact with the bosses, which I love. And the boss in Jagged Peaks interactions in NPC is by far honestly one of the best that FromSoft has ever designed. And it's not even close. As for the as for the boss, I would honestly compare it to Medir and say that they both rival each other because the boss is they're just so cool. And the new one in Jagged Peak is so amazing. I love it. I genuinely doubted that FromSoft was ever gonna be able to top Medir for me in terms of favorite dragon boss. Because I think Medir is one of the coolest bosses in all of FromSoft. And them just casually toppling Medir like that is actually shocking. I still love Medir, but oh my god, the Jagged Peak boss is so cool. Some other areas are very strangely designed, and some areas I really do not like. Like, for example, there's an area called Rao, which I really do not like. It's just complicated, it's, it's like a maze. 
and I do not like the design of that. But there aren't really a lot of areas where which I dislike, per se. The only area I probably completely dislike is Rao itself. Aside from that, there's so many other cool areas, like there is this one forest area, which turns the game into a horror game, to say the least. It is such a cool-ass design, and it's such a cool-ass area, and I really hope that FromSoft does stuff like this more in the future, to the point where it's just like, it turns the game completely on its head, and you need to worry and stuff like that more, just more fear factor into it, because going to that place was such a cool and fun experience. Another thing that I do not like is the catacombs. I just don't think that having three floors on every single catacomb is a good idea. It just kind of dragged out a lot of the gimmicks and mechanics of the catacombs and i didn't really like a lot of them they just kind of felt frustrating and stressful rather than enjoyable like some of the catacombs in the actual game the mausoleums on the other hand i actually kind of liked you go in you fight a person you get loot simple as that moving on to the enemy and boss design they knocked it out the park with this one so many bosses so many enemies are just really cool looking and some of them are actually really grotesque looking the ones that you guys have probably seen by now is the lion the dancing lion by far one of the coolest bosses in elden ring because it's such a unique and strange looking boss and his fight is really cool because he doesn't move like a human yet he is human it's these two people hiding inside a, da a dancing dragon costume and for those who do not know what a dancing dragon costume is I don't really know the exact name of it. If you know the name of it, uh, you can correct me in the comments. But essentially, it's just a it's just a long train of people in this dragon costume, basically dressing up and acting like a dragon during Chinese festivals. Aside from that, the the bosses attacks, the the phase transition. Oh my god, it's really cool. There are things I do not like about the lion boss, and in comparison to the other bosses, I think the lion boss is actually kind of weak in terms of design, especially compared to somebody like one of my favorite bosses in the DLC, Mesmer. Mesmer is the guy who was in the trailers, the, the red guy with the fire. That's Mesmer. He His boss fight is fucking amazing. From the music, to the attacks, to the phases, to basically everything about Mesmer. I really like Mesmer's fight. He was such a cool fight he felt really engaging unlike lion see when i fought the lion my main issue wasn't oh this boss does too much damage oh this boss is hard oh he, he looks boring no my main issue with lion was oh this fucking camera sucks ass that's been the same with a lot of the big bosses in the elden ring dlc the camera is practically your worst enemy but on the other hand mesmer had a really pleasant camera he actually had a camera that worked half the time which made the fight so much more enjoyable yes there were times where the camera would explode and it would just like flip upside down and you probably would get roll caught because of it but that's with basically every single boss there's not really any boss that can have a fully flawless camera moving on to the weapons and item designs i genuinely think that FromSoft knocks it out of the park with this one there's so many cool new items there's so many cool new ashes of war there's so many cool new armor sets and items that you can pick up and i genuinely think this may be one of FromSoft's best rewards or drops whatever you want to call them because the weapons honestly rival that of Bloodborne. And for you guys who know who have been on my channel for a very long time, you guys know that I am probably the biggest Bloodborne fan ever. Um, so today we will be killing the final boss, Moon Presence. To the point where I have about probably thousands of hours on Bloodborne at this point. And I'm still eagerly waiting for a Bloodborne PC release or a rem remake. But you know, that's never happening because of Sony always hiding Bloodborne away. But the weapons and items are so amazing. There's there's a couple of new weapon types, mainly backhand blades, great katanas, light great swords, beast claws, and perfume bottles. And also dueling shields. All of them are really cool, although some of them are very broken. My favorite one being the backhand blades because they're so cool 
this Ash of War blind spot is really fun to use. It's really strong and also very efficient. And also it's alternative Ash of War, which I don't have, but I, I know that it's ridiculous. It will get nerfed. Swift Slash, another weapon, the Great Katana or the Longsword from Monster Hunter, if you have played Monster Hunter. It's basically just a Longsword from Monster Hunter. Really cool. Beast Claws, it's basically like the claw weapon, but more animal like you're more throwing your body around you jumping everywhere you're clawing stuff it's really cool very strong weapon but it's not as fun as the claws i think personally then we have light great swords which are fantastic i think i really i really enjoy the light great swords they're very fun really smooth animations really smooth gameplay i genuinely really liked it and i can't wait to get another basic light great sword for my own builds then we have perfume bottles probably the most broken of the bunch because you can just one shot every single boss in the game then finally dueling shields cool weapon will definitely help me on my shield only run hopefully if i can reach the dlc even i'm still struggling on my shield only run now again, I did forget about the hand-to-hand -hand weapons, so I'll go over them really quickly. They're fun, they're not the best. They're fun in PvP, but they're kind of garbage everywhere else, as far as I know. The Palm Blast is pretty good, that's about it. I like the weapons, but I wouldn't really recommend them for PvE boss content. Open world stuff, sure, it works. But if you've made it this far, please consider subscribing as it helps our channel a lot. We also did stream all of the DLC over at my Twitch at twitch.tv slash chromaticstv. You can find me there. We are live almost every other week. But on this channel, we generally do a lot of variety stuff. We do reviews, edited videos, funny things, in entertainment, edutainment, just a general type of videos. But let's get into the video again. The music and sound design is, nah, it's, it's some of the best. Oh my God. Some of the bosses music are so good to the point where I get shivers every time I listen to them Especially the lion boss and a couple of other bosses who have a very similar type of whenever you whenever they change Transition over to the second phase you hear the music of bumping up and it's really cool. I fucking love it The music design, oh my god, they, they really did cook. They genuinely cooked. Sound design, very similar as well. There's a lot of cool sound effects in the game. It's not like over the top, but it does have a lot of cool sound effects. It's mainly the music that is on the forefront of this DLC. As for the story, it's simple. You go into Mikala's shadow world in order to fix something because you met a person named Needle Knight Leda. And you're essentially, your job is to follow the path of Mikola or some shit like that. And I'm not going to say much about the story except for that. Other than Moog beat the allegations. That's all you need to know. But generally speaking, the story was really cool. The characters you meet are really cool. And the interactions you have, like I mentioned earlier in the world design, I really enjoyed the way they designed the characters, the story, and especially like the environmental storytelling is fucking amazing. Now comes probably the most controversial part of this video. Is the DLC too hard? To answer that, I just had to say kind of. Before you guys get in on my neck and say skill issue, get good, you're just bad at the game, just let it be known that I have played every single Souls game ever made, essentially. I've played every DLC. I understand that the DLCs are hard. Like, for example, in the Ring City, when the angels could one-type you just by breathing. I do understand that the DLCs are supposed to be hard, but hear me out for a second. While I do think that the DLC should be hard and is hard, I do not agree with that artificial difficulty should be the forefront of the difficulty itself. Because I feel like artificial difficulty is definitely taking a spot here. Now, my character is a very high new game level, so it may be because of that. But I feel like every enemy shouldn't want to three hit you. It's, it's an artificial difficulty that I personally do not like. And I know leveling Shadow Tree levels help. It does help to some degree with the basic mobs, foot soldiers, and so on and so forth, but the, it still doesn't do enough, especially versus bosses who still basically annihilate you for doing the wrong move. I'm a fan of mechanical difficulty, such as, for example, Sekiro. 
or Bloodborne, where there's a lot of mechanics that you need to follow, and if you follow them correctly, you win, but if you don't, you get punished for it. And I do think that Elden Ring did nail the mechanical difficulty side, but it let the artificial difficulty get ahead of it. But do I agree that the DLC needs to get generally nerfed? No, not really. I only think that a couple of moves from bosses and enemies should get nerfed. I'm not gonna mention it, but the final boss has a move which involves a three-hit string, that ends with a massive cleave with a shockwave. That move should not do what it should do because it basically is undodgeable unless you have a specific setup with specific talisman or if you have a shield. I do not like the fact that that is a thing, but what can you do about it except for learn to use a shield? And that's what I did and I beat the boss by only parrying. The difficulty should be hard. I'm not denying that. I genuinely think that since it's a DLC in a game made by From software game developers that are known for making games difficult and challenging the dlc should be hard but i feel like they kind of let the mechanical difficulty step back a little bit and in favor for more artificial difficulty i know that artificial difficulty is still difficulty but i feel like they should slow down on the artificial difficulty part and also some moves should get a tune up like i said i did mention the final boss there's a there's another boss that is essentially hog rider but but with a spear instead, which also has an attack that is kind of ridiculous. If you know what it is, if you know the move, then you know the move. But essentially, he fucking runs at you and you got basically fuck all to do if he starts running at you. And that's about all of the moves that are genuinely infuriating to fight against. But overall, what do I rate the Elden Ring DLC? I would honestly rate it an 8 out of 10. It's very, very, very good, but it also has a lot of drawbacks to it. Like, for example, the catacombs, some of the world areas, and the annoying artificial difficulty. But aside from that, the weapons are a 10 out of 10, the, e the enemy and boss designs are a 9 out of 10, world design is a 9 out of 10 for the most part, the music and sound design is a fucking straight up 11 out of 10 and the story well i mean it leaves you with a lot more questions than answers at the end of it but it was pretty solid regardless it was kind of an eight but yeah the dlc is worth buying but it has a lot of quirks that make it really hard to enjoy at times i personally will probably still be playing the dlc because it's it's a very fun dlc and i know that a lot of other people will be playing it especially in the pvp scene since the pvp has been practically revamped now with a lot more new gear with a lot more fun stuff to use and i really hope that a lot of people enjoy this dlc as well i hope a lot of people get over the fact that you know the difficulty is too hard, especially compared to the base Elden Ring. And I personally will be helping people trying to beat story bosses as well as just bosses in general. So if you meet a guy named Chroma in your games if on the ground with a yellow symbol, make sure to call me over to your world and I will try my best to help you with the bosses. As for which bosses I will be helping with, I'm, I'm generally going to help with as anyone that I feel like at that point. From the final boss to Mesmer to Lion to the boss boss in jagged peak or that one forest or you know whatever i will be trying to help as many people as possible with the bosses because i genuinely enjoy playing the game but i hope you all enjoyed this video if you did leave a like if you want to see more of my videos and my opinions and you know edited videos and whatever whatever like i said a variety of content make sure to subscribe you can always change your mind later at a later date but I do have another video coming very soon about my first 12 hours of the day one experience of the DLC. I'm about maybe five minutes deep into the video. I'll probably aim for the video to be around 12 minutes long. But without further ado, I hope you all have a good day and I'll see you next time. Peace.